I wanted to touch on DSD as a means of recording because that's what we will be basing our new studio on DSD, Direct Stream Digital. And that's a format created by Sony, or at least the the brand name was years ago. It's, it's actually something uh, rather technical, and I'll try and explain this, explain the benefits to it as best I can, but to keep it simple, because we don't want to get, <coughs> excuse me, overly technical in, in these discussions. I just want to, I just want to help you understand what it is and why we base our studio and our recordings at the new label on it, as opposed to just about everybody else in the world that bases their recordings on PCM what you would associate with digital audio. A few people use DSD. Cookie Marenko, our, our dear friend at Blue Coast Records, is one of the very few who appreciate uh, DSD for its analog-like qualities. But there aren't many, and so <clears throat> when we make this new studio, we will absolutely base everything on DSD. So, DSD is as close to analog as you're going to get. Far closer, far more musical and natural sounding than what we would assume is, is digital recording, today's digital recording, which is PCM. <clears throat> now, I know a lot of people are going to go, nah, nah, you know, some of the great recordings are done in PCM. And it's true. There are great recordings done in PCM. CDs can sound remarkably good not as good as DSD. Never as good as DSD. So let me give you a little bit of history. Way back when, when all this started, analog tape was the bee's knees. That's Everything was recorded on analog tape. And we had uh, good analog tape and bad analog tape. We had 15 ips inches per second, 30 ips inches per second again, or or seven and a half. But most professional recorders spun it pretty fast, and the 15 uh, ips per second, uh, inches per second, was was the standard for professional recording. And then the the width of the track. So a quarter inch tape, like on my machine, I use quarter inch tape, but it's it's called half track, and half track means that half of the tape goes to the left channel and the other half goes to the right channel. And <clears throat> by using a, a wider piece of the recording tape, as opposed to, you know, the, the, the tape recorders where you could flip the tape over and then record on the other side, that's quarter track recording. The wider the track, the greater the dynamic range, the faster the tape went, the, high, the better the frequency response you could get. Now that is analog, pure and simple. It's the definition of analog, and records were made from those tapes. And, and we're gonna skip all the direct to, direct to vinyl and all that right now that also inhabited analog, but we're just gonna focus on tape. So after the era of tape uh, went by, and in the early 1980s, there was a lot of dissatisfaction with tape which had gotten to a pretty good state because tape has a whole bunch of difficulties. It can be noisy. There's always tape hiss on it. It has limited dynamic range. You can maybe get 70 dB out of it, where a live orchestra can hit peaks of 110 dB, sometimes as loud as 120. So tape can never capture the true dynamic range of a live performance. And there's that tape hiss problem. It tapes wear out over time. The magnetic material will, will degrade. The actual uh, plastic that the tape is made out of degrades. It's, it's just, it's not a perfect medium, but it sounds great. I mean, it's what we based everything we think about modern recording on was analog, analog tape. So when digital came around in 1982 or so, 83, and the CD was produced, it was supposed to be perfect sound forever. Well, we all know what happened with that. It sucked. 
and people stuck with vinyl, we stuck with analog tape, we, uh, we just did not like the sound of early CDs, and for good reason. It was awful. I remember uh, one of the first albums, the Brothers, uh, Brothers in Arms album, they got a Grammy for recording quality. It was one of the first digital albums. Uh, it was actually a CD. And the way they got that to sound decent was by running it through uh, analog equipment after it was, so they would run it through these Neve processors about 20 times over and over and over running it through this uh, analog stage to get rid of the digitalness of it and add some analogness to it. So anyway, along came digital and over the years digital has gotten better and better and better and uh, and it's always had technical advantages over analog I mean it can do CDs can do 96 call it 100 dB of dynamic range about 30 more than the best analog tape but it still sounded digital and today unless you have the very best analog to digital and digital to analog converters uh, you're not even going to have a prayer of getting close to the musicality of analog tape. Well, then along comes DSD. Now, DSD has been around in with another name, which is called pulse density modulation, as opposed to PCM, which is pulse code modulation. And pulse code modulation, or PCM, is the basis of 99.9% .9 of all digital recordings today. And pulse density modulation is very different. Pulse density modulation is actually as close as you're going to get in the domain of ones and zeros to analog. So briefly, pulse code modulation, when you look at it, it's a bunch of ones and zeros, but it's put into, as its name implies, a type of code, and that code represents different amplitude levels for a given period of time. So we, if we were to count how high a signal, how loud a signal goes, and how soft it goes in terms of numbers, and we would have maybe a couple million numbers uh, for little increments of, of loudness, we would put that into a code that a computer could read, and when a normal human being looks at that code, you don't see anything, you just see a bunch of, you know, funny stuff, a bunch of square waves. It, it's meaningless to you. Now, pulse density modulation does things very differently. And when you look at a pulse density stream on an oscilloscope, you can actually see the uh, up and down movements of the waves. Because they, as it gets louder, the, the the, the pulse density increases, so you get a denser amount of bits, uh, and there's just one bit, just on or off, but the, the density, the, 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 the grouping of those bits for loud areas is, is, is quite dense, and for soft areas, quite, what's the opposite of dense, sparse, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just I'm focusing on what I'm trying to tell you, and I'm not thinking of good words here, but uh, it, it's more empty, right? To the point where it could be zero if there's nothing there. So pulse density is very close to analog, and is as close as you will ever get. In fact, to my ear, there is nothing about tape that is better than pulse density, or DSD, um, capture of music and in fact there's everything to love about the way DSD sounds it it sounds identical Let me try to kill anybody here okay we're clear uh, it's it's absolutely identical uh, to to my ear and the ear of, of, of people who really know what they're what they're talking about to the original recording where analog tape it's close, but, you know, I still hear its deficiencies. And DSD, PC, uh, I'm sorry, um, PCM recordings, it's great, it's good, but compared to the same thing on DSD, one sounds natural and normal, the other, not so much. It has a flavor to it that we don't like. So, 
Anyway, our new studio will be completely based on recording everything in DirectStream Digital, DSD, on the original Sonoma recording machines that our engineer, Gus Skinnis, and our, uh, and, 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 uh, our friend Ted Smith, who designs all of our digital equipment, had a hand in, and, uh, and, and created by Sony. Well, Gus now is, is the sole owner or the sole proprietor, if you will, the holder of the technology for the Sonoma recording, mixing, and mastering systems. He, he owns the rights to it. He owns all the technology because he was the only one. When Sony abandoned DSD and SACD uh, years ago because it just wasn't working out to their, to their satisfaction in terms of dollars, in terms of revenue and business, uh, never in terms of quality, they, um, they sold everything to Gus, and Gus took it all and has all the Sonoma equipment and recorders, and, and now we have all of that because of our partnership with Gus, and in the new studio, that is all we will be using for recording, mixing, and mastering is the Sonoma system, which is all based on DSD, which is something that many people, unless you have a collection of SACDs, or you are familiar with that, you probably have never heard just how great it can sound. But I can guarantee you that once you hear a recording in pure DSD, and, and for that matter, a recording in pure DSD converted properly to PCM sounds better than any PCM recording transferred over to CD. And I know that doesn't sound like that makes any sense, but trust me, we will demonstrate to you how that is true because the other little secret to our to our new label, to our new uh, uh, record label uh, and our new studio is that Gus, because he owns the Sonoma technology and is sort of the master of all of this, he has developed a way to take the pristine natural quality of DSD and transfer it over to CD so they're pretty close definitely not identical but they're pretty close and as close as I have ever heard so anyway that's what it's all about I'm super excited we'll do more car chat uh, on another day okay <laughs> take it easy time to go to work